My Journey of Faith Radio with your host, Vicki Pett Henderson, physician, writer, speaker, encourager, and lover of God's Word. My Journey of Faith is a place to inspire, equip, and encourage women in their personal walks with Christ. Here's your host, Vicki Pett Henderson. Welcome to My Journey of Faith Radio. I'm so glad you joined us today because I'm really excited about my guest. My guest today is Angela Slaughter, and she writes fiction, which is a little different than what I usually do. I usually interview authors who are writing uh, inspiration or memoir or different genres, but I have not interviewed anyone who has written fiction, and I love her book. It's called A View From There. So welcome. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Well, tell us about your family and all the new stuff that's going on in your life right now. Oh, it's a bit of a roller coaster right now, but it's a beautiful ride. Well, I have um, three kids. I have a Belle, she is 13, and a Stella Drew, she's about to be 12, and I have my little man Jeb, and he is 8 years old, and I'm married to Matt, and recently, actually this past Easter, I'm just 13 or 14 weeks ago, actually, we launched a church here in Fayetteville. It's called Hill City Church, um, and it's just been a wild and crazy ride, but a very beautiful ride. So we're excited about what God's doing. Well, I love your family so much. Uh, well, you delivered the first two, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I was there when it started, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, tell us about your book, A View From There. question for me to answer, just what it's about, um, but it is a novel set in a small southern town. I'd say there are um, two main characters, although there's a lot of very lovable, colorful characters in a view from there, but the main characters are Kate Canton and Malcolm Bauer, and um, both have suffered some major loss in their lives, some recent loss, and it's a story about how the paths of those two characters collide, um, and a lot transpires after that, a little suspense, a lot of humor, um, some danger. Um, it's a story about loss and pain and redemption and reconciliation. Um, it's a story about really losing your faith and your trust in God when um, things get dark and bad things happen, and then the pathway back to faith being restored. Um, almost every character has a decision to make. <clears throat> Something's happened to them, like I said, some pain and some loss, and they have to ask themselves, am I going to stay here in this um, debilitating darkness, or am I going to push my way to my feet and get about the business of living again? I love in that. Nutshell, in a nutshell, that's what it's about. I love that. And if, after reading it, and a lot of times when I interview someone, I've not yet read their book, and interviewing them makes me want to read their book, but I've already read this book, and if I had to describe it in one word, because of the title, I would say it's perspective. Absolutely, that's a, that's a great word. And, and I agree with you, you know, having written a couple of books myself, um, none of which are published, but one will soon be self-published, when people ask me that question, it is absolutely the hardest thing I <laughs> I start, I start squirming. I start, I start squirming. I never, I want to just get the book and read the back cover to them because it, it's such a hard question to sum it up in just a few sentences, but I hope that did it justice. It did. It did. And, and it's, it's awkward. awkward. It's just some, for some reason, it's, it's just strangely <laughs> awkward. <laughs> so where did you get the idea for the character Kate? Because to me, that she is the main character. Of course, there's Malcolm, but I guess I related more to the female character in the book. How did you, did that, is that something that developed over time, or? The character, Kate, well, you know, a lot of people have asked me that, and a lot of people ask me, um, was this inspired by you? And I think when you write fiction, every character is going to have a little piece of you in them, um, or a little piece of somebody you know, and I think it would be a fair assessment to say there's a little bit of Kate me and Kate, um, the story um, was actually, it, it came about after the death of my grandmother, 
and the process of me um, navigating through that very dark and painful time. And so as I am writing, I'm actually mourning. Um, I went through the process of mourning as I'm writing the book. And so there, you will see glimpses of me in the book. In fact, um, there's a scene where something has happened to Kate and um, she's devastated. She's sitting in her living room and all of a sudden she jumps up and she just takes takes off out the door and she's running and she eventually ends up at her mother's grave and she's on top of the grave. Um, she lays down and it says something like um, she pressed her body as close as she could to the body um, in the ground and there was a point where after Grandma died, it sounds so it sounds so weird now to even talk about it. It sounds a little morbid, but um, right after she died, there was one night where I just missed her so bad, and you know that um, she's not there. You know that her she's in heaven, her, her spirit's in heaven, but that body is just so precious to you. And I actually drove out to the cemetery. We were. Um, in Russellville visiting my grandpa and drove out to the cemetery and just laid down on top of her grave. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but um, I just wanted to be as close to her as I possibly could be. And again, I know she wasn't there, but um, so yeah, many times in the book, um, Kate does or says something that very much mirrors my grieving process. Mm, that just brings tears to my eyes, actually, because you were unusually close to your grandmother. Yes, I was. That's a big part of, uh, of my story that we can talk about later, maybe. Um, but she was my uh, she was my mother. She she and grand, my grandfather adopted me when I was very young, and they had me actually from day one. So they were my parents. That and they were really good parents. They were amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess when it's your grandparents, by definition, almost you're going to lose them at a younger age. Yes, and they were already um, in their late fifties when I came along, and so you know, I think you you obviously know. Okay. I'm not going to have them as long as my friends are going to have their parents. But, um, you know, you're just never prepared for that loss. Well, and then you lost your grandfather how long ago? Well, lost grandpa um, two years ago, a little over two years ago. So, so, so do you have any other books that you're working on? You know, I have started a book. Um, I'm probably uh, getting close to about halfway in, but with the start of the new church that we've done, it has taken up so much of my time. So that's been put on the back burner um, just in the past few months, but I am just itching to get my hands back on it. So, yes, to answer your question, yes, I am. I am working on a second book. Good. And how long did it take you to write a view from there? Because as I mentioned earlier, I began writing that book probably um, six months or so after I lost Grandma. And so it really was a slow process because um, I was uh, healing at the time and um, it just took a while. It really did take a while. And also at that time, I had two very little kids. Uh, Belle was two and Estella Drew was one. And so... I was really deep in mommyhood at that point in time. And so this one uh, has gone much faster, actually, and I'm enjoying it a lot. So now if, if Belle was two, that was 11 years ago? Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, the, the process, <laughs> I would say the process of trying to get the book published was as arduous as writing the book. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> that I was looking for, and then there was the um, editing 
bidding process that probably took a year or two. So all of that adds up pretty quick. It does. It does. And it's just, it is just, arduous is a good word for it. It's just kind of slow and, and painful. So do your kids understand that you've written a book? I mean, do they think that's cool? Yes, they do. They think it's cool. Um, it took me quite a while to get my 13-year-old to read it. Um, but once she did, you know, she she really is. I, I, I tell my friends I just need to pawn her out to them because every single day that child will say, Mom, you just look beautiful today or you know, I just think you, your dress, she, she boosts my, um, she just boosts my confidence all the time, and she read that book, and she was like my little publicist, just wanted, wanted to tell everybody and tell all her friends about it, she did reports on it at school, so once I finally got her to read it, she liked it, <laughs> it took a while to get her in. It, it's always good to have a, a cheerleader and a fan who is also a family member. Sure, there are some deep concepts there. And you talked about the setting. And and I know you grew up in a very small town, correct? Yes, a tiny, tiny little town, Appleton, Arkansas. I don't even even call it a town. I think it's just called a community, but yes, it's a tiny town. So how many people live there? Oh, gosh, I don't even know. Not, not many. I, I would say not even 200, 300. I'm not sure. And so is the town modeled after that, or is it more of a compilation of different um, towns? No, you know, uh, several people have asked me, is there a real Millville, Arkansas? And the answer is no. Um, it's, it's based, there is no Millville, Arkansas, but after we have lived in northwest Arkansas for a time, we spent a lot of time up here, it's based somewhere between, um, like, Salem Springs and, and that area. Um, but no, it's... It, it doesn't exist in real life, but many of the characters that I've written about, um, they are based on people that I knew and grew up with in Appleton, you know, being raised by older people. Um, they had a lot of older friends, and so um, I took little pieces of those characters that I knew from my childhood um, and wrote about them. Have any of your former classmates, are you still in contact with any of them? Have any of them said, hey, I recognize that person, that's me? <laughs> you know, a lot of them have said and asked me um, about Aunt Modine in the book, which um, Modine, the name Modine, was actually the name of one of my grandmother's sisters. Um, my grandma had um, 13 um, brothers and sisters. And one of them was named Modine. She, there's a great story in Modine's life, a sad story, but um, I wrote a paper on it in college. She um, fell in love with uh, a man who had tuberculosis back in the, um, gosh, 30s, I think, and um, ended up marrying him and contracting the disease and had to go live in a tuberculosis sanatorium and I actually went to the sanatorium and I was just so intrigued by her life and I found a bunch of letters from her to my grandmother and my grandma's um, cedar chest and so I just fell in love with this woman that I had never met and so I used that name Modine but my friend asked me um, if Modine is modeled after my grandmother and of course not completely, but there are uh, many aspects of Modine that um, she shares with my grandma. So Modine in the book is probably um, one of my favorite characters just because I do um, see so much of my grandma in her. Well, and that's what I love about the book is, is really the characters and the, the depth of the characters. And then there's almost this folkish... Um, flavor 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've compared it to Jane Karen, but with a lot more, and you mentioned danger and uh, just more, I think a lot more drama. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. You know, I, I mean, I, I wanted them to read it and enjoy it, but I just wanted um, to make people laugh and cry and just bring them to the edge of their seat. And I wanted them to fall in love with the characters, you know, Kate and Malcolm and Mobin and Beulah and all the other people from Millsville. I just wanted them to, um, I wanted the people who were reading it to feel what the characters were feeling and see what they were seeing. And, um, I wanted them to really connect with the characters, their joys and their struggles. And um, More than anything, though, I think my hope in the book was that um, the people who were reading, the readers would find their own glimpses of hope in the book and be able to take that with them on their own journey. That is, that is very true, I think. Um, I think when, I know when I write, even a blog post, if someone tells me that they laughed and cried, yeah. that's just sort of the, that's just gold to me. That's what you want. That's what you want, because... You know, it's so deep, and you want your writing to be able to convey that, and so when people do tell me that, um, there's not a better thing I can hear from a reader. Because you know they're connected. Right, right, absolutely. Even though they're fictional characters, I think... They can enrich our lives, and that's what, I mean, that's the way life is. We laugh, we cry, we can relate, you know, and I love that glimpse of hope because, you know, I, I use that word perspective, and I think that that's what it is. It's a glimpse of hope that if we could see things from an eternal perspective and from a heaven perspective, that we could be encouraged in our own circumstances to know that we don't know the end of the story, but God's in there, and he's working it out. So, is there anything else that you would say is a central message? Is that really the message of the book is hope? Um, I think so. You know, um, it's a view from there is really a product of my life when I was so mad at God. Um, and I know that sounds horrible to say, but if I'm being honest and real, you know, He had just taken. Um, grandma, um, the woman who was my rock and my best friend, and you know, I just leaned so hard on her. I had little kids, and I just needed my mom. And so, in the blink of an eye, she was gone. And so, um, you know, in the book, there are two main characters, like I said, both of them who experienced a loss, Kate and Malcolm, but. One, um, Kate, really handles herself with grace and courage, and Malcolm, the other, just becomes furious at God um, and lets him know it. And um, if I'm being honest, I was more like the Malcolm character at the very beginning. Um, you know, after the funeral, I found myself alone in um, a quiet house. You know, after everybody leaves, that's the hard part. You know, you get through the funeral, but then everybody leaves and you're alone. And um, I was just so mad. And there's a part in the book, again, um, there are many times in the book where real life inspired the fiction. But there's a particular scene um, where Malcolm is in a quiet church and um, he just suddenly feels the presence of God with him there in the church and it just makes him mad. Um, instead of comforting him, it just makes him mad. He yelled up at the rafters of the church for God just to leave him alone. And so what Malcolm did in that scene is what I did in my house. <laughs> when I found myself alone, I was standing there in the hallway, and I just felt his presence all around me, comforting me, you know, letting me know he was there. And instead of me letting that peace settle on me, um, I just got mad, and I literally yelled at the sky, you know, I don't need you here. You did this. Um, and you would have thought that God would have just left me alone after that and thought, I'm not messing with this chick, but, um, you know, that's not what he did. And, I, you know, right on my blog, um, the more that I 
yelled at him, the more I could feel him pulling me closer. The harder I pushed him away, the, the more he was pulling me closer to him. And at the time, it, it made me mad. It was annoying. But, you know, today I can look back on that, and I find all those encounters beautiful. You know, I was so mad at him, and yet he just never let up in this, the pursuit of my heart. And so, um, a view from there really was born from those deep places of grief. And I just, I want anyone who reads it, who has gone through that kind of loss, and, um, and, and there are those who have gone through much greater loss. I mean, losing a mother is ridiculously hard, but, you know, I have friends who've lost children and husbands. Um, just to know that um, in the darkest place, there is hope, and that's that's really what I wanted people to get from a view from there. I love uh, that, and, and don't you think God honors honesty? I mean, I just think of David in in the Psalms and everything when he just was so brutally honest with God, and he would just he would tell him how he was feeling, and I think God honors that because He's big enough to handle it. Right, you know, Matt doing a sermon series right now at Hill City called The Pretender, and just talked about David last night and how um, David didn't pretend, he never felt like he needed to pretend with the Lord, and he was considered a man after God's own heart, and so um, we never have to pretend with God. He, it's not going to help if we do anyway, because he sees straight, straight through us, no matter what. Well, I love that gut level honesty. I mean, I just, I love that. Even if it means shaking your fist at God, I think it's better than, like you said, pretending. There's nothing worse than that. And one of my favorite verses is um, in Psalm 94 when David says, um, See, if the Lord had not been my helper, I would soon rest in the silence of death. If I say my foot is slipping, your faithful love will support me, Lord. And when I read that verse, I always almost yell it. If I say, My foot is slipping, it's just this desperation that I think God brings us to that point sometimes so that He can that we can realize that he can meet our every need, even in the hard times. And he can, and he does. Well, tell our listeners about where they can purchase your book and about your website and where they can find you and all of that. Well, probably the best place to purchase it is on Amazon. Just do a quick search for Angel Slaughter or a view from there, and that'll pull that right up. Um, my website is just angslaughter.com. My husband... Probably has never referred to me as Angela, so <laughs> it's angeslaughter.com. Um, and on that, that website, there's links to where you can purchase the book. Or There's a blog that I do, and um, if you would want to get in contact with me for some kind of speaking engagement, all that can be found right there on angeslaughter.com. And the name of your blog? You know, I don't know that I have a name for the blog. It's just on the website, and it's just a tab. If you look on the blog, um, I'll be on the website, and it'll just be a little tab that says blog. You click there, and you'll get right to it. Okay. And how often do you blog? You know, I'm telling you, this church plant <laughs> has slowed me down in lots of areas. But, you know, I feel like um, as we get more help with the church, um, it's going to free me up to get back to doing what I love to do, what I've been called to do. Not that I don't love helping with the church, but, you know, when when you know what your calling is, um, you really can't go a day without doing it and still feel satisfied. So I'm ready to get back to, to a lot, doing a lot of writing. I thought I hadn't seen much lately, but I figured that was why, because I know <laughs> just being a pastor's wife is oh, just know. a huge commitment. It's a lot. It's a lot. And um, right now, creative team at Hill City consists of me. <laughs> so, so, you know, there's a lot going on, but like I said, I, I'm just anticipating the day where I can just dive right back into it. Well, my sister is a pastor's wife, so I know about that, but um, the creative team, they're, they're blessed if you're the creative <laughs> team. I'll just say that. <laughs> Is there anything else that you'd like to add about your book or your family or your writing or your church or your life? It's just, it's beautiful, you know, and um, life for me is 
start out that way, I think. Um, but it's amazing again how God um, just restores you and reveals Himself in so many um, beautiful ways. And um, my life truly is a testimony to um, don't you dare give up. Um, hope is just around the corner. And so, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm excited about life right now. I'm excited to see what God's going to do for the church and through the book. Um, it's just an exciting time for us. Well, that is awesome. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. It was great to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. All right.